Hello and welcome. Today we'll be doing this problem. Find the area of the square. So we have a square. And as we can see, we have two right angle triangles inscribed in our square. Of which they are hypotenuses. Hypotenuses are also the side length of the square. We also know that the longer side of one of the triangles that forms the right angle has a value of 3, and that the shorter side of the other triangle that forms the right angle has a value of 2. So how will we approach a problem like this? Well, just by looking at it, it seems as if both our triangles are identical to each other. We already know that they share their hypotenuse, they have the hypotenuse in common, which is the side of the square. So what we want to show is that, let's call this angle alpha here, let's call this angle beta, that they also have their angles in common. So, so how we approach something like that? Well, what we do know is that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Since these are right angle triangles we're dealing with, we can conclude that alpha plus beta is equal to 90 degrees. But what do we have here on the upper right hand corner of our square? We have a right angle. Since this angle here is beta, we can ascertain that this angle right here would be alpha. And since our second triangle is also a right angle triangle, that means this angle here must be beta as well. So now that we can have concluded that these two triangles are isometric, meaning they are identical to each other, they have the same shape and the same size, what we're going to do, we're going to try to build a square in a square. So we know that now this whole side right here of this triangle is worth 3 and that the shorter side here of this triangle is 2. So we can conclude that this part right here would be the difference between the long side and the shorter side that form the right angle. So 3 minus 2, it would be 1. So now we're going to try to build our square in our square. So I have a length of 1 here. This would be a right angle as well. So let's around here would be, let's say this would be a length of 1. And we're going to draw a line perpendicular from this point, whoops, all the way to the one of the corners of the squares. Does it look like a right angle? There we go, that's better. All right, and this would be a right angle right here. Since we know this is 2, this part right here, and we also know that this angle right here will be beta because we have another corner, another right angle here. So alpha plus beta equals 90 degrees. This also would be alpha. And now we can finish this off by adding a, our last line right here. And this would be beta. And this would be a right angle. And this would be alpha. Uh, and this would be, yeah, that alpha. There we go. And there we go. So now. We have four triangles, four identical triangles, plus this square right here. And all of that will form the area of our large square. So we have our four triangles, plus our small square. And all of this would be equal to the area of the large square. So the area of the four triangles, one of the triangles, would be the base 2 times 3, all divided by 2. The area of our small square, this has a side length of 1, would be 1 squared, just 1. So what we get, we'll get 12 plus 1. And that would be equal to 13. And that is the area of the square. Now, actually, this is a very famous proof of Pythagoras. Yes, so where this, let's call this side length A, let's call this side length B, 
we can call the hypotenuse C. So where A square plus B square is equal to C square. So it's one of the older proofs. I have a picture of uh, a proof from uh, ancient China. Oh, there we go. So I think this is from 200 BC. I got this picture from Wikipedia. Let's see what it says. Visual proof for the 345 triangle as in Chou Pei Suan Qing, 500 to 200 BC. So on the left hand side, the translation says, the sum of the squares of the lengths of altitude and base is the hypotenuse length squared. So I'll leave it up to the watcher to go through the the algebra of it. You can find it quite easily on the internet if you like as well. Uh, it's one of the many proofs of Pythagoras we have. Uh, we might we'll go through some different ones and uh, later on, and we'll start introducing problems that will use Pythagoras to solve them. And with that, Matthew, teach you math. Thank you.